Thank you uh, for your patience, and uh, thank you for getting as much information out as you possibly could uh, last night. Uh, what we are now investiga investigating uh, is a homicide, and what I would like to do is to talk you through uh, the entire timeline, the circumstances, and the details. Uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, Catherine Aguas Vivas, was a U.S. citizen. She had lived in the United States for the past five years. She had established uh, U.S. citizenship. Uh, her home country was the Dominican Republic. Uh, she and her husband were associated, uh, husband is still associated with two businesses in South Florida. Uh, her residency is in Homestead, and the businesses are a barbershop and a, and a beauty salon. She, she left South Florida yesterday driving the white Dodge Durango that we put out with the video that we had yesterday. We think that she left South Florida uh, just after noon. Uh, we know at around 2 o'clock uh, the vehicle was seen traveling northbound in Jupiter, and she came into Seminole County through downtown Orlando in I-4. Uh, 3.30, 4 o'clock, uh, in the afternoon is when she is arriving here. Uh, she stops at a Seminole County gas station. Uh, it was a Shell gas station located just south of 436 in 1792. Uh, she pulls in there, pumps gas, uh, stays there for approximately eight minutes. She travels from that location heading northbound on 1792 uh, into Seminole County and then ultimately gets into Castleberry and turns down Button Road and weaves through the back streets on East Lake through Winter Springs. Uh, about a half a mile before the intersection of East Lake Drive and Tuscawilla Road, and that's the location of the intersection that the video was released on, about a half a mile or so prior to that intersection, she started to notice that the green uh, Acura was behind her and the Acura was actually ramming into her back bumper at that time. At that time, she picked up the phone and called her husband, uh, told her husband that she was being rammed, that there was somebody there that was following her. The husband provided the advice to don't stop, don't stop anywhere. Uh, there are no known reports to the sheriff's office or policing authorities uh, made by either uh, Catherine or the husband that we're aware of. Vehicle stops at the intersection, as you can see from the video that we released last night, the Dodge uh, Durango is at the uh, first position at the intersection, has the light, the only thing that's stopping her uh, is the light that's there. The uh, green Acura is directly behind, and although we don't have uh, visual evidence so far uh, uh, proving, we suspect that one of the occupants of the green Acura gets out of the Acura uh, wearing a black hoodie, uh, wearing a ski type of mask or a ninja mask as we've called it, uh, carrying what appears to be consistent with a uh, automatic uh, handgun, uh, consistent with a 10 millimeter handgun, which will come into play a little bit later uh, in my news conference. Points directly at the driver, Catherine, uh, tells her, we suspect, to unlock the door, which she does. He jumps in the rear uh, passenger seat behind the driver, and she immediately makes a U-turn. This is witnessed by the driver that's behind the vehicle. Another occupant inside the vehicle is the person that is filming from their cell phone uh, the video images that we have and that we've, we've released of the incident. She makes a U-turn at that intersection, probably heading, speculation here, but probably heading in a direction where, where the suspect does not want them to go. And we suspect that he orders her to turn around again and reapproach the intersection of East Lake and Tuscola Road. Uh, at that intersection, they turn south and they're heading southbound, nearly rush hour traffic here. Uh, southbound on Tuscawilla Road towards the Seminole Orange County line 
all the way down to Aloma. When they get to Aloma, they make a left. They go all the way across all lanes of traffic so they can get on 417 southbound. At this time, we suspect that Catherine is still driving under the armed uh, dictatorship of the suspect. Here's where you're going to go. Here's where you're going to drive. They drive southbound on 417, uh, likely getting off at the Narcusi Road exit. They travel the back roads of Narcusi, ultimately turning off onto Boggy Creek Road into Osceola County, where there is a, a newer construction area uh, that was set off in a little bit of a distance, but not so far away that eyewitnesses could not report hearing gunshots and ultimately the smoke of a fire that was set ablaze, uh, the vehicle that was set ablaze. Uh, by the time authorities uh, with the Osceola County Sheriff's Office arrived there, there was so much damage to the vehicle, you could not positively identify the vehicle, uh, but they also discovered that one person was deceased and found in that vehicle. Now, it's an important part, part here because we believe that to be the vehicle and the decedent to be Catherine, but we have to positively confirm that through the scientific method of, of uh, DNA examinations and, and dental records. But from all accounts of looking at the scene, it looks like the vehicle and is consistent to everything that we, we've seen so far. Uh, in addition to that, there was 12, uh, 12 shell casings there of 10 millimeter rounds and one projectile that was located on the ground at that location. Uh, circumstances leading up. Follow-up investigation, uh, the, uh, the initial report that was provided to us was Catherine was traveling to Central Florida to visit with family members. We know of no family members that are living in Central Florida. Uh, the time that she was in Seminole County was less than an hour, and we have no knowledge of her uh, or the suspect, quite frankly, uh, living doing business or being in Seminole County uh, prior to this incident. The timeline uh, between approximately 5.30 in the afternoon yesterday when we got the call for service of what appeared to be a carjacking, robbery, kidnapping, uh, we responded to the scene uh, as we typically do as an urgent type of response just moments later and have been working the investigation ever since that point in time. It, it's about one hour and 45 minutes from the video that was released at that intersection of East Lake Drive and Tuscawilla Road. An hour and 45 minutes later is when the call for service of the vehicle on fire and the gunshots in Osceola County. Uh, anybody who is familiar with the area, uh, during rush hour, it is probably nearly an hour driving time between this location and that location. We suspect it was a direct route between here, going down Tuscola Road, getting on uh, uh, ultimately um, 417, heading southbound, and going right to that location uh, to commit this murder and homicide. Uh, we do feel uh, that the, the occupants of the green Acura, uh, both the driver and at least one other person that got out of the car and entered into the Durango, uh, knew exactly uh, who they were following. Uh, we are, again, still putting together to try to explain a motive. There is no uh, criminal history here for either Catherine or her husband uh, in the United States. There is no clear uh, indicator why somebody would do this, why would, would they target them. But we do feel and believe because uh, she was being followed. Uh, they were watching that. Uh, she called her husband. The husband said, don't leave the car no reports to law enforcement that this was not a random act of violence, that the perpetrators knew exactly who they were going after, uh, why they were going after them is something that is a part of our ongoing uh, continuing investigation at this time. Uh, we've spoken to her husband, uh, family members, and that process will continue on. The green Acura is obviously a vehicle that we're incredibly uh, concerned about right now. Uh, we've released that last night, and we're releasing it again today. So if, if anybody saw the Durango or the Green Acura uh, yesterday afternoon, 
witnessed any of this that now in the aftermath is kind of putting some pieces together on something that you witnessed, we want to encourage you to contact the Seminole County Sheriff's Office or Crime Line where you can be eligible for a financial reward and can remain anonymous. We're specifically looking for any bit of information that you saw during this entire encounter or uh, if you recognize this vehicle that had a partial obstruction to the tag. Uh, we don't think the obstruction to the tag was intentional. There was some plastic covering that was on the, on the uh, license plate. The plastic covering just had uh, become wore out, and it was difficult to capture the tag identifiers in the video. Again, any information about this particular tag is going to be in, incredibly important uh, to our ongoing investigation. The next steps are to continue to work this with our detectives and our investigators. We are working with the Osceola County Sheriff's Office and other stakeholders uh, in this process to put the pieces together. Uh, we do believe that that vehicle and Catherine are, are the uh, homicide victim in that location down in Osceola County. And as um, and soon as we get some more information, we'll be happy to, to share that with you. Uh, with that, I'll, I'll open for questions, but before I do, please continue to understand. I'll answer whatever I can, but this is a fluid, ongoing uh, investigation that's 19, 19 hours from start to finish right now. And uh, uh, again, with that, I'll open. Sure. Uh, no knowledge of air tag or any tracking device, uh, but we simply don't know at this time. Uh, we, we don't know where the green Acura picked up her vehicle. We do believe it's probably uh, somewhere in the central Florida area, but there are pieces of evidence uh, that still need to be evaluated to see if we can identify where the green Acura started to trail. We do know that in Castleberry coming down East Lake, uh, they were there already a half a mile prior to that intersection. He was already ramming the back of the car. So with, with, um, with certainty, we can only say at that point. We just don't know where they started following or when she actually noticed at the time. She did notice and call her husband, but that was just moments before uh, the intersection and what we witnessed on, on, the, on the video. Our team is on the way down to uh, South Florida now. At, at this point in time, there is no explanation why somebody would target her, why, why she would uh, be followed like that. Of course, that's a part of the ongoing investigation that not only our detectives are, are going down there personally to meet with family and friends, but working with counterparts. But again, there is no prior reports, no knowledge of criminal history or activity. Um, it just really is unknown at this time. You said you didn't know if she had any, you can't document if she had any family here. Did her husband know that she was traveling to Central Florida? Well, he was the one that uh, provided the information that, that it was likely that she was coming up here to, to visit family. Um, but again, he is somebody that we continue to talk with that, that is helpful to us in our investigation. Um, any information that he has, but the, but the report that we had received through those intimate contacts of her that she was here to visit uh, family. It sounds, like the, it sounds like the husband knew more than what he was letting on to say she told him not to stop. Is that your, your opinion? You know, I, I, I'm not going to speculate. Uh, you know, anytime something like this happens, we always encourage 911 is like a, an absolute. You want authorities. You want somebody there. Um, but I, I can't explain why this would occur a half a mile before the intersection that she would call her husband. Her husband would say, don't stop. I could see somebody saying, don't stop, you know. But to not call 911 uh, is, is something that, um, that, again, I don't know the answer to that. Sure. Um, if it was me, I'm, I'm going to call 911 or I'm going to encourage my family and friends to call 911. That did not happen in this case. Sheriff, the vehicle that she's driving, is it in fact her or her family's vehicle? And the reason I ask that, the phone number that's listed on the back of that car does not go to either her or her husband. And I'm just trying to understand the connection between phone number that says that vehicle is for sale, which is a South Florida number, and if you have any details on that. 
Yeah, I, I, I don't know who the registered um, uh, owner of the vehicle is. Uh, we do believe it to be somebody that is, is in her family or connected to her. We don't feel that she's in some strange vehicle that she's never seen driving before. We think that the vehicle is connected to, and it may not be registered to her, but connected to a vehicle that she typically drives. This is a whole series of very unsettling things here. The, if it wasn't for this guy and his passenger who rolled the video, you wouldn't even know that she's missing, right? So, so I mean, the people who are who are following behind this, witnessing this, are absolute heroes with providing critical information of a very dangerous and frightening situation. You think about it for a moment. It wasn't that that long ago where we did not have cameras on our cell phones, and and we always promote if you see something, say something. That's exactly what happened here. Not only happened here to record this incident, which gives us a great glimpse of what happened moments before uh, this murder occurred. But also the people down in Osceola County that hear these gunshots, uh, see the smoke from a vehicle, I mean, they, they call pretty quickly. You think about two citizen reports in an hour and 45 minutes in two different counties, uh, three counties away from each other. So when you watch this, it is incredibly frightening to watch the boldness of this, of this suspect, this, this perpetrator, getting out of the car, wearing a hood, carrying a, carrying a weapon in broad daylight, getting in the vehicle. It, uh, it, it, again, that is why we encourage somebody who knows about the occupants of this vehicle, knows where this vehicle is at. We're encouraging you to contact us. Clearly, they should be uh, viewed as being armed and dangerous. Don't confront them uh, yourself. Contact authorities. Sounds like the, the perpetrator was familiar with the Osceola County Motor Wallet. Can you tell us where he's been? I, I suspect that, that where they told her to go, is somewhere where they've been before. Uh, they seem very familiar with that area down there. I don't think that this is randomly, hey, pull off the road. I think that they, or, now again, we don't know, but I think that as soon as she made that U-turn, uh, she was told quickly, hey, go back, this isn't the way we wanna go, and they had that plan out and exact, knew exactly where they were going. It was, it was, it was on the way. Sure. Um, I would not be surprised. I haven't heard. I mean, I would encourage you to, to have her contact us. That may be helpful as far as the location's at. But I suspect that these killers are trying to get away from the police. So that's why at that time, if they're speeding down 417, if they're speeding down another roadway, we checked the databases and there was no report of aggressive drivers. There was no report of a suspicious vehicle that came into our, our call center. Uh, but again, if somebody saw that, that's that's critical information that we want. Not only what they saw, but exactly when and where they saw it. You were saying that she was in Seminole County to see family, but you couldn't find any family. Is there any, a, was she just driving around the county for hours? Are well, you saying that she was here? Is, yeah. Is there a destination? Well, let me be real specific. We were told she was here visiting family. We were not able to confirm that she has any family member here at all. So we were told that she was here visiting family. We have no knowledge of her ever being in Seminole County whatsoever. We knew that she left South Florida around noon. It's very unlikely that she was coming here to stay. One, two o'clock, she's coming northbound. Like two o'clock, she's in Jupiter. She comes I-4 route, seen in downtown Orlando, ultimately gets off. So where she was going, we, we absolutely have no idea where she was going. Correct. Husband says she's going to Central Florida to visit family, uh, did not provide names of the family members, and our research uh, through investigative tools can no find no family members uh, that, are, that, are, that are here. So we don't know who he was referring to when he says family. Uh, it, it could be friends that they call family, uh, but we don't know of any biological family that's here in Central Florida that she was on her way to. Uh, quite frankly, we don't know why she was here or how long she was planning to stay here. So as far as there's excursions in the woods, approximately, did any of the toll plazas or license plate readers throughout the county, did they pick up what the 
That's part of the investigation that, that I am not going to release right now. Um, you know, we want to call upon the public's assistance that if you know the, the operator of the vehicle, uh, as you can imagine, Jeff, we're following up on that right now. Our team is kind of looking at that, gathering as much information. Um, I, I don't want to be dishonest, and I don't want to disclose investigative techniques and exactly where we are. So that's something that we're working with. But so fundamentally, this captain. green car and whoever was in it can be anyone. Correct. And that's why we're calling on the public's assistance right now as we work the investigative end with technology and police work. Uh, we hope, once again, citizens who've witnessed bizarre and suspicious behavior will step up like they have with the reporting of the, the initial incident and reporting of the murder scene, uh, which we believe to be the murder scene uh, uh, down in Osceola County. We're working the case because we don't know somewhere between here and there, she was alive and likely deceased uh, down there at their location. I want to underscore once again, um, I want to give you the most timely information as we possibly can. Uh, we need DNA and dental records to confirm that that's her. We need physical evidence to say that that's absolutely 100% the vehicle. But I would have to be pretty confident right now to come out and tell you this, that this is likely the vehicle, and this is likely uh, who it is. Once we get some additional details, again, there's a, a lot of unknowns, a lot of things that will leave people scratching your head, and I think the biggest is why. Because this wasn't just a random incident. They're ramming the car half a mile before that intersection. They get in the car. Uh, why, did, why, did, why did she and her husband not call 911? I don't know. Uh, why did she stop at the red light? I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of things that will absolutely – uh, never know, but this is a tragically a tragic incident nevertheless. I mean, a horrible, horrible, frightening situation. If you know the whereabouts of the vehicle or know who the drivers or the occupants were, please call us. So as far as your, your gut goes and as far as like a bigger picture of this, because carjacking is happening, you know, obviously aside from this incident, if you're stopped at a red light and somebody taps on your window and they've got a gun in their hand, what, as a law enforcement uh, expert, are the best practices there? use gunning? Do you try and get away? Do you just say, take the car, you know? Yeah. Do do? Well, I, I think that goes back to fight or flight or instinct and being prepared uh, to the best ability uh, that you possibly can. For some, uh, they're going to arm themselves with, with a firearm and they're going to respond in, in, in a likely type of response, right? They're going to exercise their right to carry arms. For others, they're going to they're going to flee the area, hit, hit the gas, regardless if there's a traffic signal there, and, and call 911, do something. I think that, that uh, there are so many factors and circumstances. I think that the main message is be aware of your surroundings constantly and respond and react and do something to the best of your ability and what you feel most comfortable with. Um, I mean, if he walks up to, to the vehicle like that, if, did she see him coming up? I mean, we don't know. And by the time that you have a gun in your face, it's really almost too late to, to do anything, right? So, again, uh, we don't know, but I know that, that you always have to constantly think. And I think that this story right here and the stories that we see across the country uh, make us all go back and say, if something like this happened to me, what would I do and how would I respond? I know I, know I do it every time I, I, I see these tragedies. Sure. The body that you found in the vehicle, there's two quick questions. A, was it in the driver's seat? Is that where the, the body was found? And then, two, has other jurisdictions – had similar cases like this, particularly down in South Florida. Are they part of this investigation in any way? Uh, there's no link to any other investigation that we're aware of at this time. It'd be early in, in, in our investigation to kind of make that nexus to, to what's going on there. I'm not saying it's impossible. We just don't have that connection uh, yet. I don't know where inside the vehicle the body was located. I mean, that was a pretty uh, a damaged crime scene, right? If it's, if it's damaged to the point where you can't even tell if it's the Dodge Durango or not. So I don't know exactly where the body was, was positioned uh, at that scene. It, it, um, it takes a little bit more time. I mean, there are clearly 
uh, technology, license plate readers. I mean, we used to not talk about it, but there's license plate readers everywhere. Uh, some of this information is picked up from license plate readers that gives timely feedback into various sources of locations. It takes a little bit more time to get the video evidence from the toll and the toll plazas and all that, and that's something that we're working on now. So where she was at, obviously, if we had the transponder, it would be a little bit easier, but because of that fire, all of that stuff is just absolutely gone. So. Oh, I, 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 listen, any piece of evidence, I, I hope that cameras and technology and, look, we, we live in a, a, a time where, where we're being recorded constantly around us. So, but that's one of the things that we'll obviously look at to see if we can get that camera to, to see if she's still in the driver's seat, to see if we can see him in the back seat. I mean, we're going we're gonna to follow up on, on all of that, but some of that takes court order, and then you've got other people to, to kind of respond back to it. But I tell you, that's towards the top of our list, clearly. Yeah, so, so the husband is, is uh, uh, working with us. Uh, he's not working on the investigation. We don't involve family members uh, uh, doing that. He's providing us as much information as he, he possibly can, and that's one of the sources that we'll continue to talk to as we try to put the pieces of the puzzle together and find out uh, what goes on. But, but at this point, it's, uh, you can imagine if you, you get word of a spouse, a family member, uh, just 19 hours ago, go, kind of going through this thing, or even less than that. But, but he is working with us, and he's cooperating with our detectives and investigators. Okay, so how many, how many suspects are the police looking for? There? Well, it's hard because when you look at the video, you don't know how many people are inside that green Acura, right? Uh, you can conclude that there's at least two. There's a driver, and and there's at least one person that got out of the green Acura. Uh, but I don't know if there, it may have been four people inside the Acura. We just simply don't know, and that's why we want the public's uh, support to help us out. So I've answered everything that I can possibly answer. I've given you kind of kind of where we're at now, try to paint a story as far as the timeline goes. We are taking the lead on this homicide uh, investigation here at the Seminole County Sheriff's Office, and when we get more information, we'll make sure that we can provide that. I do want to emphasize the importance uh, of, of, of cooperation because your offices, your stations uh, broke in to your newscasts and got this out there immediately. Uh, and I'm incredibly, the citizens of, of our Central Florida community are incredibly thankful for that because we watched it when, it when it broke in. And a lot of the news desks and the anchors really w weren't even sure what was going to be played on there. So I want to thank you for getting that information out there. I want to thank you for your patience as we've tried to put the pieces of this together. Thank you. It was immediate. It was nearly immediate. Um, they, they, one was recording, one was driving. They called it in. Um, it was right around 5.30 in the afternoon. I think our first unit was six or seven minutes after that making contact with them at that location. So.